Then what's this pastiche Chanel logo under their very noses? Interlocked S's, sign of cult designer Sean Stussy. Pants and shirts and jackets and hats. It's basically baseball caps and, and t-shirts and jeans. There's some corduroys, yes. There's leather jackets. There's a lot of hats. A lot of people collect them, you know, like if, say, like, you know, like these, you know, there's ten colors, and a lot of people buy every single color, you know. And then as soon as there's, a, I mean, as soon as there's something new, they get all of them colors. I mean, we, we sell hundreds of them a week. We got some hats. No, wait a minute, we don't have hats. Every bin is empty. We're out of hats. Now the hottest hats in town, a testament to ex-skateboarder Sean Stussy's snowballing success at satisfying today's logo junkie by offering up a variety of signs in a knowing use of brand awareness. Come along now, brothers and sisters, open up your mind, don't be making a mister. Give a little love, show a little kindness. Too much push, Here push, is a Stussy Tribe hat, wool two-tone hat. Stussy's dull. Stussy's cool. Fully fat, man. Now it's a uniform in all high schools. I mean, it's basically for surfers who aren't surfers who want casual, comfortable clothes at an inexpensive price. But the conoscenti are every bit as demanding as Chanel wearers. Nah, it's a fashion statement. Oh, people are gonna know. People are gonna know, you know, the cheap shit from the good shit, you know? And as with Chanel, the visible signs of style have a bonding effect. Why is it called a tribe? Um, I mean, it could have been a posse. It could have been a crew. It's a, definitely a group of people. It's an international tribe. It's friends in all these cities. You want more? Get on the floor. I'll give you something that I'm sure you'll enjoy. You want more? Get on the floor. I'll give you something that I'm sure you'll enjoy. The sweet B on the MIC. The WHIP me. A tribe. I don't know. I just think it was on a much more earthy tip than a posse. You know, this wasn't a big posse of badass people. A tribe was a very organic word. It had a good old world feel to it, and um, it just kind of stood the test of time. So the IST, the International Stussy Tribe, has um, just been kind of a moniker that stuck, and I always liked it along the way. So I don't kind of use it. It could also stand for international style trends. Sean Stussy has noted the world trade in import and export of national styles, the American casual look now being a virtual uniform for the young of the world. You know, you go to Europe and there's like a chippy Chevignon and 20 other people that all make the exact same kind of clothes, which is on an American Western thrift shop tip. I grew up with that since I was five years old and we've worn khakis and white t-shirts. And, and I go to England and I go to London, and they're wearing Timberland boots and big puffy down jackets and wool rich shirts. I mean, we grew up on that. You know, that's like if you lived in America. I mean, you had 501s, and you had Jack Purcell sneakers, and you had Timberland hiking boots and flannel shirts from pennies. There's just so many angles to it. You got the married by the mob New Jersey, like big haired East Coast chick, and you got the LA, like, other bigger hair, just as big or bigger blonde hair bimbo. You got the New York City Spike Lee homeboy athletic look. You know, these are all stereotypes. And what's different than the skate kid wearing really long shorts and big Adidas and every black guy trying to look like Spike Lee? I mean, there's every, half of the black guys under 20 years old look just like Spike Lee, and there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, everybody's out looking for an identity. And the wise designer stays in touch with his market. It's like derives from music that I listen to or something that we will see in a club and actually go and do it or um, you know from traveling around you bring home you go to New York nightclub and you listen to kind of dance beats you go to Europe come home go surfing in your own hometown for a month and just by keeping your eyes open and absorbing all this stuff maybe just this weird breed of it comes out that caters to all these people that and and it's kind of a unique tip it's on right now because it, it is hitting an oddball, eclectic group of people. The eclectic Stussy tribe uniform with its astute amalgam of anti-mainstream cultural influences, urban west coast, hip-hop, surf, skateboarding and the club scene seduces a worldwide youth market. I have Japanese customers buy 40 pieces at a time. It's, it's gone. He's going to go all the way. 
But does he want to? Is bigger better? I want to be exclusive and I do not care about huge sales. Well, that's what the street wants to hear. I didn't go to school for marketing, merchandising, or production. We kind of are just learning it as we go along. We spend hardly any money on advertising. I mean, if you spend two million on advertising and you don't make any money that year, I'd rather make them two million dollars and have no advertising. Fortunately, word of mouth is free. If one guy loves those pairs of jeans and ten other guys come by, and if they take them home and they're made well and they don't fall apart, and that homeboy's stoked with it, that's better advertising. We're probably good at, like, pulling the reins on letting it get too big more than anything else and that's why people have wanted it for a long period of time it's not in every store on the block you know so people still really want it like it could right now be in a lot more stores and and be like a big thing that was doing like double the the amount of sales of the stuff but then you know you guys wouldn't be here wanting to talk about it and all my homeboys wouldn't want to wear it because everybody else did so there's really a fine line and a natural like growth pattern to it frank and i never were like big shot kind of want to be greedy guys as we've really like um, tried to like be true to ourselves and like have it from the soul more and not like say yes to a bunch of money but say yes to a turnover of around 30 million dollars a year with marketing every bit as sophisticated as Chanel's your customers advertise the product while wearing them striking that curious balance between extroversion and exclusivity it's street culture as big business despite its apparent disingenuity yeah, it ain't no market study or anything. I don't know why. You know, it's, it's catches me as off guard as anything. And all I got to do is just, or all I can do is to keep doing what I like to do and keeping some like honor in the who you sell it to and not wanting it to be in everybody's store. But then I'm this year's model, and the people aren't going to want it next year. So it's really a. And I mean, where's the textbook on that? You know, how many people do you sell it to? And at what number is it then a sold out deal? I don't know. This is not, there's nothing to judge it on.